<laughs> yeah, Fox has got a new Alexa's Gonna Kill the World uh, TV show coming out this fall. <laughs> is it is it like an actual, like, realistic show or is it like a comedy? No, no, it's a realistic show. It's like a drama. It's like, oh my God. like a murder of the week. Like the guy who creates it, you know? Like Skynet? Skynet, basically. And he's like... <laughs> trying to tell the people she's gonna this is gonna take over the world and, and stuff like this and then it's like you know has a, the cuts to a scene of a little kid learning and chatting with the with the ai the ai is asking a question the father's like what are you doing oh just talking to this oh well, it do, it doesn't ask questions it only answers questions and the kid's oh looking God. like what <laughs> and you know <laughs> Well, it's funny. It's like all these uh, Alexa type stuff. Like I just watched the new Charlie's Angels. Okay. Yeah. And the whole point of that movie was uh, Alexa can like turn into a, a, a EMP and like assassinate people. <laughs> if you if you can like like there there's an open hack you know where you can get into it and so oh yeah the bad guys want it so they can kill anybody they want just by like sending it a signal. Well, wasn't that like one of the things like people like they, they had that thing where like uh, people can electrocute you through your landline telephone? Probably. I have no idea. <laughs> or like Bill Gates. He just wants to implant us so that they can assassinate us and track there us everywhere go. we go. And like, you do know we do have cell phones that can track us everywhere we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw somebody say something about that. Um... I don't know. I, I'm not saying this to get political, but somebody posted something about that. The mat wearing masks everywhere is to help improve the government's biometric scanning capabilities. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's obvious. <laughs> Duh. Which I'm like, why would that improve it when you're covering half of your face? Oh, wait, wait. We've got a Michael fanboy here. Hey, Jimmy, what's going on, man? How are you? Good to see you. I'm just teasing Jimmy. Jimmy is I just, I, I feel the newest a little left uh, out. person I've hooked on Figpin. He's on Figpin. A, he doesn't know the world he's in for soon. Man, the the whole enamel like I can go back like we talked about like when Funko started coming out and mm -hmm. uh, I started looking into those and same thing with the enamel pens and then Mondo got into the pen making thing and you know it's it's crazy. Um, the crazy thing about Figpin here, I have something right here. Hang on. The crazy thing about Figpin is that this is what Figpin is. Like, you take away the pin and everything. This little invention right here, mm -hmm. this little kickstand dude, right. that patent is what created Figpin. That's it. And what's that do? It, allows it you makes to... it so you can stand the pin up and you don't have to, like, pin it. To... It's like a, it's a kickstand for the pin. Right. The backer is a kickstand that's nice. their that is their uh contribution claim to fame yeah i mean i love pop culture stuff and and stuff like that but you know i did the uh, mondo prints like you can see behind me i've got like all the way to the i guess left that's a last yeah. of us print and then there's a pan's labyrinth and the big trouble little china and then on the right actually is the last of us as well that's a ollie moss from san diego comic-con that's cool. That one is awesome. I think it's going for roughly about eight hundred to a thousand dollars. Wow. For that one. Yeah, it's. Uh, That's great. I have probably a couple hundred to three hundred um, Mondo prints out there. That's crazy. Uh, you can't see it, but to the other side, all the way to the left, I also have a Big Trouble Little China, uh, signed by Drew Struzan from the original print. That's really cool too. So, hey, well, you talked about the print there that we can we can use that um, as a segue to talk about June. The Ivana. Yeah, now that I'm I'm allowed to say it without without considering it a spoiler, because yep. I hope that every international person has received theirs. Well, what it so is, you... just so you know, the reason why I do it two months on international because uh, some internationals choose to have their stuff shipped out every other month to save on oh. shipping. That makes a lot uh, of sense. Okay. So what happens so, is like this month, for example, is a hold month. So I'm holding okay. all of the, the, well, there's like six of them. 
that I hold, and then I'll ship them with next month's. And they save you That's know a really few dollars. Cool. We should talk. We should definitely talk about that because we definitely have international um, people in the box, the mystery box bunker. Yeah. So definitely should let, you know, it's good to know that that's an option. It's so if they're pilot, watching this video. Yeah, it's a pilot program and it's been going on for like um, about a year now and everybody stayed with it that signed up for it. So I might you that's know, really cool. try to do that because I think I have another 10 or 12 international people now since then. Wow. And so, but uh, yeah, so Ivana, she was June's autograph of the month club and I'll go ahead and uh, show you a photo of her and the signings. So she Instant was, Grail. She was in Pan's Labyrinth and Shannara Chronicles. And you'll see she signed huge. And uh, her character names on both of them. So the Pan's Labyrinth was the regular autograph. Everybody in the club got that one. And then there was a $20 mystery, or I guess not mystery, but uh, add-on for the fantasy ver variant. Uh, yeah, variant. Right, and that was where they got both... Both of them, basically. But yeah. So but, now that that signing you completed, that was the one that, that because obviously the the state of the world and everything, you sent everything to her and you just stayed. You did like a, a Zoom type meeting with her while she did the signing, right? Yep. This was the very first Zoom uh, signing that you know where I wasn't. Well, first Zoom signing, but it, where I wasn't at there personally, but. I did record the entire thing and I did watch her sign all of the photos and we chatted awesome. for a few hours. She was super nice. Hey, we have somebody international in the chat right now. Christian from Norway. Yeah. He came back. He was a, a, a early member and I think you nice. stepped away for a little while then just popped back in. Um, so thank you for coming back, brother. You know, welcome back to the club that I just discovered recently and I'm thrilled about. So yeah, so when you so you send off, you know, the basically a care package for signing and I'm it's so you you send off the little plaque for them to take the photo with obviously that you have in there, the two five eight West Authentic. Yeah. And That's so, really cool. So that the the photo there, which is something I'm still getting used to Zoom, but basically I just screen capped that from the Zoom call. That's awesome. Well, what, what sucks, though, is that, like, while I'm, like, directing her on how to position and how to sign, I forget that sometimes when I record the Zoom, if you're talking, the recording focuses on you. And so <laughs> I'm sitting there, like, just a little to the left. Can you bring that one? You know, like, okay, we got this. All right, all right. And then I go back and watch it. I'm like, crap. Oh, wait, there was one frame where it switched back, you know. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way for you to, like, hit something that it won't switch to you for a little bit well the only other way that i know of is to where it's uh recording where both of you are on the screen at the same time okay uh, and that's like i said i'm still I, I did uh the last couple months so i've done like three zoom signings now total mm -hmm. and um they've been a lot of fun and um so i'm getting better and better at everyone so um that works and christian that's really nice yeah um we just joined back in may when marco ran his special now that being said we had our eyes on the autograph of the month club for a while but then when marco ran his special which i think even though the countdown timer is done i think if you're interested in the special you can still go to autograph.deals to get yourself one of those specials even though the countdown timer is done i don't think marco's taking it down yet no yeah i am um, going to be looking to run uh, a special mystery pack i've been thinking ooh. since everybody did the gamer box i have a really cool gamer uh autograph thing and nice. uh, i'm thinking about putting that out uh, okay running it this month and see what people think about it like i said i don't have too many uh, but it was part of a larger deal that I did uh, in the past, and they've just been sitting around. And All so right. I, I think I might do a gamer mystery pack. I'm down for that. And then, you know, we're, we've been talking a little bit about having like a marathon, you know, at the yeah, end yeah. of the month. I've been thinking about bringing back like the thank you pack. Okay. You know, where basically you set a dollar amount, you buy the thank you pack, and then I'll send you a survey 
with all the kind of stuff, asking questions about what you like, and then I customize the pack directly to you. I like the, like a curated mystery box, basically. Well, an actual curated. Yeah, box. actual curated mystery like, box. Not Pers- that... personal, personally curated. Right. Like I go through, and uh, some people from the past who've got them can tell you that you know I put a. It takes a lot of work because I not only do I have to like go through the survey and see what you like and what I have, but some people who've been with me for fifteen years, okay, this person's got. I have to research like everything that I can think of that I, they've ever received. You know, to make sure that they don't get, because I really, really get bummed out if somebody accidentally gets like a double of something that I have already gotten them. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so yeah, that was June's autograph. And like you said, it was one of your holy grails. Oh yeah. I just like, and the, the funniest thing about it is, you know, it's never, like we talked about, that's not an autograph that I ever was like actively searching for because it just when you think about people who do signings and stuff it just never never clicked but then as soon as i saw the photo i was just like holy shit well i think it's also a good time to go ahead and since we're just starting out to announce next week we're gonna have a special guest uh, mike broder who's the promoter and owner of uh the galaxy con um he also used to run all of the super cons before he sold them to Reed. And then now he's running Galaxy Cons and they're doing virtual events right now. But we're going to talk to him about what it's like to run a convention. Because, like I said, he would run four or five a year, big times. I'm talking 30 to 40,000 people Comic Cons. That's great. That's right? going to be an awesome guest. I have, I have to uh, personally thank you, by the way, because. Because we talked about GalaxyCon in our Facebook messaging back and forth, my Facebook has been littered with all of GalaxyCon's promotional <laughs> ads about well, their virtual... <laughs> we'll have to ask them about that, right? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> Facebook listened to our conversation and it littered... But you know what? It was kind of nice because it wasn't there before that. And so I actually clicked on it and I went to GalaxyCon and I looked at the different kind of things. And they actually have some pretty incredible deals i think i saw um they have a um oh uh ricky simmons and you know invader zim and gur a uh, dual signing coming up uh event and they have like a galaxy con exclusive comic book or the mike colter the exclusive comic book and both of them signed for like a hundred dollars which is pretty cool and did you see they're gonna have mike colter this week was on the 8th i saw that they're gonna have a jessica jones cast yeah with the three you know I would say the only person that is missing from that is David Tennant, but that's right. huge. So, anyways, he'll be on to talk about uh, what it's like to run a Comic Con, what, and then what his thoughts on how a Comic Con will look like in 2021. That's going to be cool to hear from a promoter, and not just a promoter. This is one of the biggest yeah, promoters they, they, on yeah, the East Coast, the actual convention person. It's going to be cool to hear. Like, he he's the guy that runs it like the owner yeah that's gonna be cool to hear what his thoughts are going going down the in the future yeah so uh, i think that's gonna be a lot of fun uh thanks josh yeah the the shannara chronicles photo uh i tweaked it a little bit just so that there would be a lot of room for the signings i'm trying to make sure that all of the photos that i do there's a nice sweet spot for the actors to sign um and so uh, I'm yeah, glad you it, like that. I really like the uh, custom photo way that you're doing with the, um, I'm not going to say the person that was in uh, July's, but it was nice to have that, like almost that mat area for them to sign in. Yeah. If you like that one, wait till you see, I topped that one by like 10% at least uh, <laughs> with the supernatural one coming up. I can't wait to see that. I mean, I, like I told you, I was, I really look forward to doing this thing next uh, for the September box. Mm-hmm. When you release a couple hints and release theme themes and stuff like that, um, I really look forward to making a post and talking to people in the um, uh, in the mystery box bunker community and really starting to dive down that rabbit hole with with other fans because I had a really good time doing that. Um, well, speaking of Jeff McAwe just joined a, he, of his Lego, he has a Lego uh, building channel. You nice. go ahead and put your Lego building channel if you want in the link there, brother. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Link it. If you, Jeff, if you're not in the, um, if you're not in the bunker, man, 
you should join the Mystery Box Bunker and definitely put your videos up because Legos are absolutely a collectible, and we welcome all collectibles, all YouTubers. You know, we want to we want to hit all different fandoms. Actually, before we went live, Marco and I were just talking. Did you get that uh, new Nintendo set with like the the little crank that moves the picture on the TV? <laughs> that thing is pretty wild. But uh, so yeah, but uh, one of the things that I did, the new lessons that I learned is like uh, with this month's Supernatural one. Yeah. So uh, I was able to did the photo of the actress, right? Blow it up nice okay. big, did the band, you know? Then I put yeah. the uh, Supernatural logo faded uh, in the background of the band, right? So that tattoo, you know, that they get on the chest. Yeah, the, the prevention from being possessed. Right. So that's faded inside the background of the sweet spot. Oh, nice. And then not only that, but um, there's another scene of this actress with uh uh Jensen Eccles you know it's a mm -hmm. really really cool part of the uh of the episode and i basically faded that in the top left corner so it's almost okay. uh like she even missed it at first and i had to like point it out to her and whatnot and then she noticed it but it's it's just kind of like an easter egg in a sense it's like cuz there's like kind of the smoky swirly background that i used okay and so I colored the photo like with a filter to match the same color as the, the smokiness. Uh -huh. And it's just kind of like almost like a ghost faded print in the background. Uh, so here's a, I have a good question for you um, going in that because I've noticed uh, there's I see in like some of the groups, um, the different companies out there that, you know, that we support. Um, they talk sometimes with the private signings or. You know, there's items that they, the pre-sell item photos or the photos that you can send in. Sometimes you have to get approved. So is there a process of when you create these photos, especially comparing when you, if you're going through a person individually versus going through an agent um, to get your custom photo approved? Is there a process to that? 90% of the time, no. Okay. Uh, sometimes actresses, agents... Um, are very picky on what they want them to sign. Um, okay. We can talk about that a little bit more in the trading card, about the early stuff in the trading cards one day. Okay. Because uh, there was definitely approval processes with those. Um, but a lot of the times, uh, unless it's, you know, I've been I've been super respectful. Like, I don't actress, uh, have actresses really sign, like, nude photos. Like, I didn't go to Amelia Clark and say, hey, sign all these naked photos of you from Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It was, um, and whatnot. And so that's usually the case. Like, you'll get an actress who's just tired of, you know, having, you know, just, you know, certain photos all of the time. No, that's a big one. If, if an actress has, I've noticed that if an actress has been in anything where they have any type of nude scene, that's, uh one of those that the question comes out immediately. Um, hey, can I send in this photo or will they sign this Playboy cover or will they sign this? And a lot of the times it's uh, it's no, they don't want to do that anymore. They, yeah. they want to sign the pictures from the movie or the poster from the movie right. and not the, you know, well, photo that, of them. That's why Amelia Clark didn't sign for many, many years um, mm. until like, I think, about a year and a half ago, she she reappeared um, and signed with uh, Dallas Comic Con, I think. Okay. Uh, the Fan Expo, I think, was her first con appearance. Um, but that's another story I'll tell you one day about uh, geeking out with her um, <laughs> and stuff like so, that. So, yeah, so Jeff... Um... Yeah, everybody who's here, definitely go check out that link that Jeff put in. And Jeff, I don't know if you're in the bunker or not yet, but definitely look for the Mystery Box Bunker on Facebook. Join it. Uh, we, I don't believe we have anybody that pushes um, Legos or other types of hobbies like that. So we definitely welcome that. And we'd love to have you added to that because I know it's a huge collecting point. And then he heard you talking about the trading cards and brought up Glee. 
Yeah. The that was probably the third set of cards that we did. I think because it was right after we did. Well, okay. So I did Firefly. Then I did um, Heroes, Chuck, mm -hmm. True Blood, and then Glee. I, I know you have some Misha order. Collins cards. Was there a Supernatural one or was it just Misha? Uh, it was Supernatural. The, there was three cards. There was Misha, uh, Rob Benedict, who played the prophet Chuck slash mm -hmm. God. <laughs> and uh, Spoilers for anybody who's behind. <laughs> uh, as, after if like... Anybody who's behind, you just ruined the, <laughs> the big twist. Yeah. And uh, the then um, the Angel Anna... Okay. Um, she was played by, uh, I forget her name, but she was also in like Stargate Universe. Julie McNibbins, that's what it is. Yeah, she's the she's like the the angel that took over, but I remember her from Stargate. Yeah, she, the, I think she had a big fight with Dean when they did like some time traveling back to when Dean yeah. met, met his grandfather. You know, at one point. Yeah, she, she had a couple of big conflicts with Castiel too, didn't he? Didn't she? Yeah. So I believe. Yeah, but yeah, that um. What did you think about that? I, I thought, since you already dropped the spoiler, just to just to touch that. Um, no, uh, Christian, you do not have to be a content creator. You are welcome to join. It is for everybody. The point of the bunker is to have collectors, uh, business owners such as Marco. Um, we have a lot of... We have Nick, who is the owner of Fearsome Figures, and Todd from Fearsome Figures. We have a lot of different people in there. So it's all about collectors content creators, business owners, all together talking about their product, advertising it. It's a great place to find new things that if you want to collect. Um, if you are being guarded about your wallet, that's the only reason I'd say watch out because so far that's the biggest complaint that we've gotten about the bunker is that people are finding too much good stuff. I did post um, a scam warning in there as well today. If you'll notice, oh yeah. like on Facebook, you've been, there'll be a lot of these ads for just some really cool stuff. They had this ad for this, you know, almost three foot uh, T-Rex statue from Jurassic Park. And they wanted $50 <laughs> for it, right? And okay. uh, I, I click on the site, it's like 50 bucks, free shipping. And then what you've got to do on those sites is click their uh, back to their homepage. And it's just generic um, WordPress template, right? And, I mean, the, and then, then I did a little bit more research and it turns out that the figures actually from the slideshow, it's like $400. Right. And so okay. Facebook's got a problem right now where uh, a lot of these these just weird independent stores. I think this one was called Oliver or something like that. And uh, I posted at the bunker as a scam warning because, again, this statue would cost fifty dollars shipping alone. So if they're trying to sell yeah. it to you for fifty dollars with free shipping and then they have a bunch of bots make comments on it and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it looks real and everything yeah. looks real. And then the, and then they'll just never ship it to you. Um, that's yeah. That's another that's another thing that we have. So for anybody who is here and interested in the bunker, there is in the announcement section of the page. We have what we created a trusted company section that touches on um, Funko, Fig Pin, autographs, comic books, all the weird boxes that my wife does. <laughs> um, so we definitely what Marco's bring up is a great point. We, and we kind of started off addressing that right away with saying, these are companies that you will see on our channel. You will see in this, in this group, you will see these owners. These are real companies that you can trust with your money. Cause that's a huge thing. Right. I mean, like I said, it, it just, if it seems too good to be true, sometimes just, just do a little bit more research. Um, yeah, for right. sure. I mean, let's be, let's be honest. I, uh, before before I knew you, before I knew Autograph of the Month Club, I did research because I thought it was too good to be true to hear twenty dollars a month for an autograph, regardless of if it's not an A lister every time or ever. It's still I was like twenty dollars for an autograph every month. Come on! And so I did a ton of research just because I, you know, you gotta well, you gotta you'll you gotta notice smart that there. there was about two years worth of Autograph of the Month clubs that came from Florida Supercon and Mike Broder who will be on the show okay. next month because I did buy out his uh, collection of sign outs. That's awesome. And so 
you know, that's where, you know, I kept the, the club under 150 because, you know, there was never more than that much inside that I had. So if I couldn't go over one month. Yeah. You know. Hey, Ryan. Nice to see you, brother. Um, anyway, so I was going to ask you that I was going to segue going backwards because we always we always uh, branch off. What was your I want to hear from you. What was your feeling on that? reveal of who god was in the show i had been anticipating it a little bit you know and like there was rumors even and then they went away for a few months or for a few years and then there was an episode um i think if if i'm right it was season 10 and he'd come back and there was a the 200th episode called fan okay. fiction if i'm remembering right where the they happened to Supernatural the musical, right? I remember that. And so at the end of that episode, um, the the woman, the character who who wrote it and directed the play and all that stuff, had left tickets for the producers. And you know Chuck's character shows up at the end, but they don't show him until they pan back, and he's like, "Yeah, I thought that was a great." you know, interpretation or whatever. And then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, Chuck's back. And he's obviously God. Yeah. You know, because that was him being gone for, like, what, four seasons or something like that? Yeah, yeah. He was just, he was gone. And th that was the, I thought, and I still, I think that they did a really good job with choosing. Because it, it's, it's hard to, you know, a character, to, to play a character like God. You know, you have preconceived. Like, did you ever watch that? Um, oh, what was that? The movie with um, Bedazzled. Do you remember that movie? Yeah. And how they insinuated that God was that black prisoner. Do you remember that? No, I, I remember the movie. I remember it was. Um... There's that scene where he's in where. Um, oh, what's that actor's name? The. The main guy. For, he Brandon, was in The Brandon Mummy and everything Fra also. Brandon Fraser. Yeah, Frazier. he there's that scene where he's in jail and he's the his the person in the jail cell with him is that uh, African American guy with the dreadlocks who's smoking and he's talking to him about, you know, you can't really like you can't really lose your soul like right. it's not yours to give away. Honestly, I watched the movie when it first came out and I don't couldn't tell you any more about it. I just I I think like hair like omniscient characters like that like you it, I, I find fascinating the casting that they do right like and preacher did you i think preacher? they did a great job i i my rambling aside i think the part of making chuck god was brilliant i see the thing is is i don't know if they originally thought of it him as god right yeah. or if it was just all the fan theories for four years and they're like yeah why not you know what i mean like yeah, you don't know. Was this a chicken and the egg type of thing? Like, was Chuck it's always really, a prophet? Yeah, it's really interesting to see if they ever if they come out and you know once this is done, you know there's going to be eventually give it five years or something. There's going to be a documentary about the 16 seasons of Supernatural, but um, and being one of the longest running shows ever. Right. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see if they if they bring that up. How much of it was was an audible and how much of it was actually planned like did you actually introduce this fake prophet or another great one is um loki the guy right. who was supposedly loki but then he ended up just being an angel robert or robert springland or something like that yeah and so it's like was he actually supposed to just be loki and then you guys liked him so much you kept bringing him back and changing that he wasn't just a trick and then and then flipping it that he wasn't just a trickster but he was actually an angel like right. did you actually plan that or was that just because you liked that character and wanted to keep him around right well a bit of trivia that there's well i'll come back to that later but uh <laughs> but uh but yeah i mean those are the kind of questions that you know you get debated on reddit and online and it's, yeah. it's fun to ask and maybe we'll try to get somebody on the show one time and ask them That'd be cool. See, like but, Je Jeff thinks that Chuck was a one-off character um, that they kind of brought back, and uh, I'm really curious to see, like, 
that show got hit. it's really sad that that show got hit so hard on their final season with this covid stuff cuz it's like i really hope it doesn't lose that this covid thing doesn't lose the momentum of the fact that they still have like six or eight episodes left i'll be honest with you i've been trying to watch the first couple episodes and it's 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 hard <laughs> Like that first. This is ep- the one. This is where the 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 you're on where the the town, right? Yeah. Like the town with all like, the ghosts. Like I honestly, I watched started watching the second episode, and I realized that I didn't even finish the first episode. The first couple, I, I agree with you. The first couple episodes of the season are rough, but then it definitely hits its stride. Um, I don't know how far you are, but they. I I just a- finished the second episode. And I'm like, I'm gonna watch something else. Yeah. So they they definitely. You'll see why they're doing what they're doing. What they're doing, they're doing something to fulfill a prophecy that they had a long time ago. Got it. Like, like I see, I can understand like where they're going with the link of linking Chuck and Sam, and how eventually yeah. it's probably going to be like they're going to be able to use Sam to actually become a god. <laughs> uh, you'll you'll see. I so I was with you on that. They 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 definitely like I said, get through this ghost town weirdness. Right. Um, it's when once the ghost town weirdness hits its apex, right, is when this season really took off. And now it's like it's been months, and they went on their little break, and now it hasn't finished, and it's really frustrating because it's like, where are these final episodes? And I don't know if you guys know, but Jensen Eccles is actually owns a bar down in Austin who he tends bar at. Oh, I didn't tell you guys that, did I? I don't know if that was supposed really to be like happened. he's there. Yeah, he owns a bar in Austin, and he he tends bar there. And how is he about uh, asking for his autograph when you go? I don't know. I'm I, you didn't hear it from me. That's awesome. But I, uh, uh, I definitely, um, if I ever if, if conventions come back, um, and I ever somehow step into a, a sack of money somewhere, I, I have to take Kendall. And it, do like one of those gold ticket creation events where, you know, I know it, it, it's a lot of money, but the fact of the matter is, you know, it's you, an experience. You, when you break it down, I was actually looking at it the other day and I was, the fact of the matter is that when you buy the gold ticket, it does include all the autographs. And photo ops. So yeah. you might actually spend that much going to a regular convention. Okay. So now. Uh, I think I prepared some stuff for this episode. Nice. So I think what I was going to do is I want to talk about the early years of 258 West Authentic. That's what I want to get into because there's so much that I missed. And you are, you tease me because I, so for people that don't know, I asked Marco if he had like a, a list of everything that has come out in the autograph of the month club. Like, I just want to see it. And he's like, I do. But I'm not giving it to you because I want to. I want to show you stuff. <laughs> well, I figured it'd be fun to like you know this, but well, absolutely, th- this no, actually absolutely. predates Autograph the Month Club. So this is going back to the story of how I met Nathan Fillion. Okay. Because this is definitely a six degrees of separation type story. All right. Nice. So, so the first series that I ever did was the Firefly, right? Serenity. Mm-hmm. And I did four comics, right? Um, okay. As you most know, there was actually six. But uh, then I started doing stuff for Heroes. Um, so let's take a look. And this was me at my first Comic-Con. This was New York. I'm thinking it was 2006. So you'll see um, here that there's four comics. Uh, you got Shepherd Book, you know, Jane, um, River, and Kaylee, right? So those were the first four. And then I have the comic books for Nathan, but they're not signed. But over to the side, uh, this booth, Desperado, uh-huh. um, you'll see there's a Looking Glass Wars. Okay. Like sign there. There was an artist there. Uh, not an artist, but a writer by the name of Frank mm-hmm. Bedore. And so I got to know Frank. And then the next year I had did all of the Heroes comics uh, cards. Let me see if I can find those. 
Um, so I did these, right? Um, and I'm going to go ahead. Oops. Sorry about that. So I'm actually going to put this over here so that you can actually see it live with me. Oh, nice. Okay. So these Heroes cards I did, they were about three and a half by uh, by five inch, custom made. I did the silver stamping. The actors all signed in the little sweet spot there. So Frank, he really liked these cards and the artwork. And he was starting promotion on his book. Um, and um, so... Those cards are pretty incredible. Thank you. And so... This is Frank here, and he did this series of books called The Looking Glass War, and it was kind of like I'm one of those... I'm very familiar with The Looking Glass War. It's book. one of those series where, um, what if Alice in Wonderland was real? Like, what if the, yeah. she went to a uh, psychiatric ward, blah, 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 and then the Mad Hatter is, like, coming to our world to try to track her down and bring her back, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... So that's kind of the premise of the book. He was also a producer on There's Something About Mary. He also did, uh, he was a, a skier. And I'm not sure if, uh, like a stuntman. And he was on that, that movie Better Off Dead with John Cusack. Okay. And he did a lot of the stunts for Cusack in that movie for skiing. Um, and so he wrote this. And so me and him became pretty good friends. We talked, it was stuff like that. And then... Um, I was out in, uh, um, LA to do, uh, a signing and I think, uh, f he came up to me and introduced me to this gentleman, PJ Hasma, who did this series of books called Softwire. Uh, and PJ, he came over and he loved the artwork that I was doing with the cards and he saw my Firefly setup. Okay. And he's like, wow, this is amazing. He goes, uh, but where's Nathan? Like Nathan Fillion. And I'm like, oh, well, I uh, tried to reach out to his agent and his agent turned me down and said, yeah, Nathan's not interested. And then PJ said, R really? That doesn't sound like something Nathan would say. <laughs> and I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, I'm like best friends with him. I'm actually staying at his house this weekend. <laughs> I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, let me talk to him. I'm like, all right. And the next thing I get a call from Nathan uh, or an email, actually, uh, saying that, hey, I'm going to be in New York because at the time I was living in New York and I have a flight going to Paris with like an eight hour uh uh, um, layover. Um, if you want, I can come in and we can do that signing. I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. And so, uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, me and Nathan, he shows up, we do the signing and had a blast and, uh, you know, and then as a thank you, uh, Nathan and PJ were doing a charity thing for the Phoenix Comic Con right? Uh, yeah. For Kids Need to Read. And this was before they basically handed off the Kids Need to Read uh, initiative to, to some locals in Phoenix. But uh -huh. I ended up doing a special card for them. Oh, nice. And so I think there's about 200 of those floating around in the world signed by both PJ and Nathan. That's pretty cool. And, um, and then Nathan set me up with uh, Morena. And that's how I ended up with uh, the six. Oops. Um, but I'm probably going to have PJ on the show at some point. Um, That'd be he, really cool. He did a, a series with, uh, have you ever heard of Con Man? Yes. Right. So he wrote, produced, and directed that with Alan Trudick. I love Alan so much. And so, uh, and... You know, PJ and Alan did a lot of conventions, and there's a lot of stories, you know, I can tell you that are definitely true from that series and the, the real people who inspired them. 
<laughs> but uh, I probably could, can get PJ on the show. We still talk all the time. And that'd be but, really cool. But like there was even you know, one time Frank and PJ stuck me into like a a, a party at San Diego Comic Con. It was like a rooftop party at the Hard Rock, and we came up with like the three of us were hanging out together. They had invites, but I didn't have one. So they're like, "All right, so Frank's gonna go up, talk to the guy, and then me, uh, I'm gonna hide behind PJ. And then as PJ comes in, they're gonna distract the guy. Then I'm gonna walk in. We had this whole plan, and we made it up to the rooftop <laughs> for the party <laughs> at San Diego Comic because we spent you know that San Diego Comic Con like the next year all together." And had That's a really blast, cool. and um, and whatnot. But it just goes to show you that you know sometimes it's it's all about who you know and timing and luck. And uh, literally, if I hadn't become friends with Frank, and then Frank wouldn't have introduced me to PJ. PJ wouldn't have introduced me to Nathan. You know, and uh, all of that. You know, it worked out that, pretty well. Yeah, that's such a cool thing. That's so crazy crazy that you just got into it. how did you i you know for for people here like talking about we kind of just went into here's the firefly comics but you want to mention like how how did you get into the idea or work on getting these firefly comics signed well um first off i had raised probably about 10 or fifteen thousand dollars, and i was super hyped about firefly and when they announced the movie, I'm like, I reached out to Universal, but they wanted like $50,000 for the image rights to to do photos. Yeah. And at this time, I was like, oh, no, photos and autographs, you know, I did get it, you know, do all that. And then uh, I basically got super depressed, <laughs> ended up going to the, uh, the Boston screening of mm -hmm. uh, Serenity. This was before the movie was released. It was 650 other brown coats. Me and my buddy Dave took the bus up to Boston. Uh, this was even before the movie's sound was finished, so they had sound from like Jaws and Star Wars as placeholders. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time that anybody in the theater had ever was ever going to see the movie. And to be able to watch that movie with that many people, all diehard Firefly fans, all we yeah. were all singing the songs from the series before the the movie. Um, it was just an experience and that got me super hyped to come up with another way of doing it. And then, um, uh, I saw an ad about how they were, or a news article about how they were releasing the Firefly comics, you know, which is going to be like almost like a prequel or a bridge between the show and the movie. Yeah. And that each of uh, the actors were going to have their own cover. So I went ahead and I or I signed up for a diamond account and ordered like 300, no, no, like 3,000 copies of the first issue, uh, the different okay. covers. And then I ordered, you know, all of the rest. And what's funny is I ended up selling the comics unsigned for more than I did the actual comics signed. <laughs> <laughs> because that first week when they came out, Every comic book shop had no clue, like, who's Serenity, what's Serenity, what's Firefly. And so no comic book shop had really ordered more than a couple. Yeah. And then they came out, and they were sold out everywhere, right? And I had them all up on eBay, like, selling uh, the whole set of nine, like, pre-order, like, the whole set of nine. And they were just selling like crazy. And I had them. I had them all, you know, and whatnot. And then... I was like super excited and I was just getting into comics and I was like, wow, these are, I guess, first prints, first editions. Well, Dark Horse screwed me and a whole bunch of other people out there. They went ahead and reprinted them that same week, but didn't change a thing because they were in such a hurry. So there was no like, this is a second printing. This is. They didn't change the barcode. They didn't the change anything. Second printing. Yeah, they didn't do anything. They just basically told the printer to go print another whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so there was no way of telling the difference between a first one, first printing or a second printing. Damn. And so like overnight, you know, but I did save enough to, to, to be able to do signings with people in the future uh, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, that, that was, was how I did the uh, circumvented, I guess, the whole copyright thing 
was that's awesome. You know, here I'm buying the comics for a dollar thirty. I think is what Diamond charged me at the time. Yeah, you know, for each comic and having them sign that. And then you know, then I did the trading cards. So like, uh, we'll pull up the um, these heroes ones again. Yeah, the hero ones are gorgeous. So. Uh, the artwork is, uh, the first four that I did was an artist by the name of Jason Palmer. Um, and he did the first four and then there was an, uh, the rest were done by another artist by the name of Angela Turturro. Okay. Uh, she was 16 at the time that I started working with her. She was in wow. Michigan. And, um, I found her, you know, on like art and all that kind of stuff where a lot of the artists and stuff were. And, um, but I started doing these, I commissioned these and they were always of the actor, not their character. Right. So that's why it says Zachary Quinto, not, not, you know, uh, Zachary yeah. Quinto as. Um, Are those cards the one that, uh, Milo was going to fight you? Cause he didn't thought you were coming after Hayden. The Hayden one. Yeah. That was the, <laughs> those from the Hayden signing. <laughs> and then later I did the signing with Milo. And remember I was talking about doing the, in the prop room. Yeah. That was with Greg Grunberg. Okay. And so those were signed in the prop room. Then this was signed. Remember when we talked about uh, him getting the, the call from Leonard Nimoy. The Spock. Yeah. That's so cool. And I can tell you the Kristen Bell one later where she basically just pulled over her car and we signed them, you know, you know, she's just sitting in the front seat of her car, signing them on the steering wheel. I will tell you, for uh, Kendall personally, Kristen Bell and Dak Shepard are like two of her favorite people. Oh, yeah. She just uh, the rings down to talk about video. like relationship goals. <laughs> you, you guys have like, been seeing like, their, their the Africa people. video, right? What the the their video of Africa? The oh yeah, did you ever see them with the uh, the um, the hot piece of the spicy chocolate challenge no I'll have to look that oh up. god that's a if you want to see a funny video so apparently they uh the two of them love spicy food and do you remember that that hot chip challenge that came out that everybody was eating that one really spicy like dorito no there was like this challenge that came out where it was like this carolina reaper dorito and apparently they bought it and they did it and you know you do it and it's for charity and um they did they did this video and it was they were like it wasn't that hot so then they did this spicy piece of chocolate and they did it on i think they did it on like instagram live right both kristen both, both kristen and dak and um and uh it goes downhill real fast they start having problems <laughs> it's the funniest thing to want like it it was bad i mean they're they're like drooling all over it like they are going through it it's a pretty funny video nice um uh as far as like the the art cards go yeah i remember last week i was telling you about uh so i pulled up this time uh, i also did another set for one of the comic cons where i leased a couple hundred and uh let's challenge joe cohen here joe i see you in the chat do you have this set? And I'm pretty sure you probably do. So, uh, this is a director series. So this is all artwork. These aren't photos. These are not things. This is all digital art. Those are gorgeous. And so, uh, I made these six. They're not signed, but they were like limited to the 258. And uh, I think you could buy like the set for was like twenty dollars or something like that at, at the New York Comic Con. Or and then eventually I think whatever was left over I started tossing in as bonuses to certain orders and that kind of stuff. But it was uh, yeah. So this was done in two thousand seven, um, and it was just a set of six. That's crazy. That's so cool. And then um, another thing that I, we were talking about last week was the dog. Yeah, yeah, the dog ones. So there's the dog. One of the dogs, I think, one of the first ones in the set. And then this was the binder. <laughs> and so what it was is you could get, like, uh, this first one was, like, an actual 8x10. And then on yeah. the back, 
it had uh, was signed by the artist and everything. She, I think we did like 500 of them and did like 500 binders and whatnot. But you know, that was that's great from our last chat. And that's so funny. That uh, I remember after we were talking about that, I remember that I had things like that when I was a kid. My dad was uh had me really into trading cards and um specifically i'm a hockey fan so specifically hockey but i remember things like that where you would get the custom bind like you'd some of them would send you like you'd send in like so many upcs and you get a custom binder do you remember that stuff yeah yeah i love that 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 brought back memories you talking about that well that well to me was like i remember back in the day too you had like the sticker books and you could buy like um packs and of cards and you fill out your sticker book and you know, mm-hmm. and there was a lot of stuff and i was trying to do something like that and it, this is i think where i got one of the first ideas for like a subscription service and basically it's like you pay like you know 10 bucks a month or something like that and every month you get like a new one you know stuff like national yeah. geographic used to do that as well yeah and um and stuff like that but uh you know that that was the, the just some little trivia that, that we were talking about last night so i show you the photos or last i think time. you know it's cool though because you, you look at um you know two of the companies we do bam and zobi they have both started you know including artist cards into their boxes so bam has uh artist like cards so they they create they the two together create a picture um I think I might have one over, but anyway. I would um, say, they, too, that two they, together, two of them don't actually create it, that they just go onto DeviantArt, find something that's already made, and offer the artist, like, a 100 bucks to print them. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then you just cut it, like, in half. But, yeah, but so they started doing these, like, artist select cards, and then zobi has been doing these really cool uh, metal Easter egg cards. Like, every, like, there's 50 of them out of the 700 boxes that they sell. Yeah. 50, 50 of the boxes will have this metal trading card in them from uh, from an artist, and uh, so the fact that, the fact is, is like this this trading card thing that you were doing back a while. They're they're starting to come back around a little bit. Well, I also used to do blank sketch cards. Yeah, um, where uh, I uh, would have the actor sign it at the very bottom, and then I would find an artist like at a comic con or something and have them do the artwork of the character. That's cool. And they would be, you know, limited one to one. And then I started selling. I still think I have some on the site uh, where you can just buy the sketch card, you know, signed by the actor, and then you basically just send it to your favorite artists and tell them exactly what to have done. And um, you know, I've done stuff like that. I've played around with all the variant type stuff, like um, with True Blood, mm-hmm. for example. I had the. Uh, the regular white variant card. Then I had ones that were limited to like a hundred or fifty that were signed in and uh, that were black that were signed in gold. Right. Nice. And I did the same thing. Like Misha Collins had three different variants of the That's Misha so cool. Collins card. Um, I did. I did all that stuff. It was funny to the fact that uh, one of the biggest trading card companies, Rittenhouse, actually used cut up my Amelia Clark autograph card and used it in their set as because she wouldn't sign. <laughs> so they, they bought up mine off of eBay and from other people cut them up and actually advertised that they had like special cut signatures, you know, from her, like a, like a swatch signature type of thing. Yeah. Like, um, gosh, and I then, saw somebody, I don't know if they posted it in, I saw somebody posted it up in a group. They got a, um, uh, what's his name? The director of, of the Joker movie that just came out. Um, gosh, I can't think of his name right now. But they, they somehow found a, a swatch card autograph from Joaquin Phoenix. Mm-hmm. So they did like a cool fo- uh, frame job where they put the Joker poster that's signed by Todd Phillips in that director. Right. Todd Phillips, I think. The, uh, the Joker poster signed by Todd Phillips. And then above it is the little... Uh, Swatch signed by Joaquin Phoenix, which was kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, I've been playing with uh, with uh, cut signatures. I did a test last, what was it, for the release of the Mandalorian? Where I did a hundred. Mm-hmm. I took a hundred of my Pedro Pascal's, cut out the signatures, 
and did a whole Mandalorian uh, thing limited to like a hundred. Um, That's cool. Turned out really nice. Uh, I sold them way too cheap. Um, I think at the time it was like you could get like five of them for like a hundred and twenty dollars or something like that. Wow. <laughs> and but because each one took me a couple hours to make, like the process of trial and error, you know, and. I'm a perfectionist, so I was like, you know, went through at least 10 autographs where I just tossed because I was like, this system isn't going to work or that system's not going to work. And, you know, eventually came out pretty well. And I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll plug your, I'll plug your site right now. Speaking of things that I think might be a little bit too, too cheap. You've got four different Pedro Pascal Game of Thrones autographs right now on 258 West for $35 on sale. Yep. Yeah, I did Which, a signing with him for like a thousand pieces uh, yeah, just before he left to go film Narcos. That uh, that's crazy that you have that you have Pedro Pascal's right now on your website for thirty five dollars because I know he's about to be dropping with Mandalorian items on some of these other sites for a lot more than that. Yeah, I'm thinking about. I have um, the guy who did who created the voice for Baby Yoda. Yeah. Yeah. I've got about 14 signatures of him from uh, where he voiced uh, Baby Yoda, or not ba Baby, uh, uh, Jabba the Hutt. Oh, okay. Sign where he signed the Jabba the Hutt one. So what I'm going to yeah. do is I want to take the signatures from that and do a whole dual cut signatures of him and... Um, the Mandalorian together, Pedro and him. That's, that's awesome. And there's only going to be yeah. a max 13 of them. Uh, if anybody hasn't gone gone there, definitely go check out 258west.com. Um, it is the basically the store site for things that have been in the Autograph of the Month Club. And then there's some of the cards that, that Marcos talked about. And um, some of the private you would be I did in the past. surprised by the insane deal you can get on that site. And, you know, um, so, yeah, that was uh, something I was looking into recently. But also we should plug one more time. Next week's episode, we're going to have Mike Broder as a guest. He runs uh, some of the biggest conventions on the East Coast. He was the owner of Florida Supercon um, before he sold it to Reed. And then now he runs the Galaxy Cons. I think there's at least four or five of those and the Galaxy Con events online. Uh, so he's going to be on the show. We're going to talk about uh, what it's like to run a Comic-Con uh, and what it's, what he feels like a Comic-Con in 2021 will look like. Yeah, so definitely that's going to be a huge show. You guys are not going to want to miss that. If you want to ask somebody a question, if you, if you wanted the person to ask questions about the future of conventions and what they think i mean this is the this is the guy so i'm super excited about that and um and so like i said we're also going to be you know in a couple months we're going to have some uh some more guests we had patrick gallagher on a few episodes back just before the release of uh probably some are calling one of the greatest games of all time at least in the top 10 you know uh, Ghosts yeah. of Tsunami. And um, so that was a lot of fun. That and, was great. He was a lot of fun. He was a crack up. Yeah. And so we're we'll moving forward. Um, I do ask that also uh, I'll post a link to, I think we tried to live stream this in YouTube. I don't know if it is or not. But uh, we're trying to build up the YouTube channel for the My Fandom TV. So if you guys get a chance, go to the My Fandom TV, click like, subscribe, notify, all that good stuff. There is actually going to be an advertisement for our show with a QR code that will take you straight to the YouTube. So just nice. pull out your phone, click the uh, the QR code, and it'll take you to the YouTube page so you can like and subscribe. And that will be nice. with all the Autograph of the Month packs this month. Yeah. That's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be so. It's gonna be so cool to ha actually have somebody with that experience to uh, 
with the current climate to be live and have you guys have an opportunity to ask questions. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally want to know like what he thinks, and you know, because I always thought the Comic Con bubble was coming, and that's why I actually tried to do a virtual Comic Con. You know, I reached out to PJ and Nathan about possibly all working together to do a whole virtual co uh, convention. I even bought, you know, I think it was a, um, a VCon dot events or something like that. Okay. Um, and was getting ready and that was probably about two or three years ago and again just time and money just never made it a possibility but if we could have had a jump on everybody you know two or three years when this came <laughs> yeah but and it's really weird too because it's just like i know mike uh, is doing it and so are the, a lot of the other wizard world's been doing it um uh, but it's like wait a second this like the Tim Curry was last week with them. And then Tim Curry just did a signing with, I don't know, the week, the month before the now next month, he's doing another uh, signing with like the Tampa Bay comic con people, you know, virtual signing. And it's just, it just, I'm glad it's happening, but you know, I'm going to stick with my stuff because like I said, my, hopefully a lot of the people that I'm working with, you won't see, you know, popping up everywhere. It's it's definitely interesting to see um, the uh, the definite dynamic and change. And almost, in a way, I wonder if the pandemic and the virtual autographs and virtual signings is almost opening it up more to the masses in a way with social media and right. with people sharing these, you know, whether it's like a V shout, like you look at some people, like I know my friend feed because I have so many friends in the collecting community is full of these V shouts from, from, um, from celebrities. So you look at that and you think, okay, let's say next year or the year after this does settle down and we go back to conventions. Are we going to see a new type of convention crowd with this opening up now with people getting into this? So that's the question, right? But at the same time, you got to ask the uh, the celebrities who are now seeing this kind of money from their couch. That's the other thing. Are they going to want to even travel? Like, why would they need to? Right, and that's I mean that's one of the sales pitches I use. You know, not not yeah. that I'm trying to give that away or anything, but um, the but yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting and that's why i love having the idea of having mike on the show because that's such a cool idea and so hopefully we'll get some of the galaxy con people over to watch our show as there well you go. and uh if you guys get a chance check his their site they're doing uh, a bunch of uh stuff i think on the 8th let me see if i can pull it up here everybody who's here is in trouble now because i promise you facebook is listening and facebook knows that we have said galaxy con and so, just like me, your uh, entire Facebook ads are going to be GalaxyCon live signings. But uh, yeah, they have so, um, some incredible uh, cast coming. On Friday, they have my the cast of My Hero Academia, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Then they have uh, Batwoman, the cast of, and uh, then Lucifer on Saturday as well. Uh, With Invaders, Tom Welling, which is big. Invader Zim. Um, and Team Juniper and a Star Trek Klingons thing on Sunday. Uh, so yeah, this that Invader Zim one was the one I was talking about. That Invader Zim one's pretty cool. They still have some available. If you guys pop over to GalaxyCon, I think it's like a hundred dollars. You get a dual signed uh, GalaxyCon exclusive comic book by uh, Ricky Simmons and God, I can't think of the other guy's name right now. Uh, Oh, Ricky Simmons and um, anyway, Invader Zim and Gurr will sign your Galaxy Con exclusive comic book. I was I was just looking at it; it's pretty cool. So yeah, the I have a bunch. Richard Horvitz. That's who his name is, Richard Horvitz. Yeah. And so, one of the guys that uh that I that I know, he has a big Invader Zim tattoo on his arm. <laughs> 
But so uh, those are some of the stuff that they're doing this weekend. I think they've got a Bones one coming up in a few few weeks. They got the one you and I talked about, Jessica Jones, with Mike the Coulter. Mike Coulter, the current star of the best show on TV. And if you guys haven't watched it, go watch Evil. But Mike Coulter, man, that guy. Uh, you can go get his autograph right now from Two Five Eight West for I think forty dollars. Somewhere right around there. Yeah, Mike Coulter, the best actor on the best show right now. Incredible show. I'll have to show you the picture of me and him. Let's see if I can pull that up real quick. Oh, the one where he makes you look small? Yeah, let's see if I have it real quick. (laughs) A Phantasm signing. Phantasm. I have a a pretty cool uh, Phantasm piece, Mike. I have a cast sign. Actually... Hang on, while, while Marco's pulling that up, I think I have it over here I can show you. It might be sitting right here. So this right here is a cast signed by the women of Phantasm. Letter of Authenticity. So there's a Phantasm signing for you, signed by every woman in the show, or in in all the movies. Yeah, it is. I've been going through and uh, cataloging a lot of the photos that I've got with people, and I haven't got to the one uh, with my culture yet, so I've got to hunt that one down. All right, yeah, we'll we'll find it. I want to see. I I want to see that photo though. I want to see somebody make you look small. (laughs) <laughs> well, here, in that case, I can just show you this one. So, let's see here. My picture of me and Adam Baldwin. Yeah, we Joe, we were supposed to meet Mike at a convention at, in Portland, and he actually had to cancel because of uh, reshoots for Evil. So we were supposed to see him and meet him. Uh, my wife was very excited to meet him. She thinks he's very handsome. And thanks to Marco, she now has an autograph of his. <laughs> All right, so this one is, I'm going to do this one live. So the picture might take up like the whole screen. Um, let's see here. So this is the picture of me and Adam Baldwin. Wow. Look at that. Look at that baby beard, Marco. So, yeah. There you go. (laughs) But, yeah, that was Dragon Con 2005. That's great. I didn't realize he was so big. Yeah. Good old Jane. I like you with the, in the, the, the uh, New York Comic Con photo with your Jane hat on. Yeah, we'll pull that one back up. That was a uh, let's see, me at Comic Con. So yeah, let's just go back to my very first. This is 2006, uh, February or so, 2006. You can see I was a fan of Veronica Mars. Yep. Right. And um, we have the Serenity Comics here. Here's the action figures, the Serenity binder, and then like all the way in the back, I just have the Serenity the graphic novel poster just hanging back there. <laughs> that's cool. And oh, right here in the middle of the table, you'll see that's the Serenity hardcover role-playing bo- game book rules. And in this case, just had a bunch of autograph cards from Veronica Mars. And I think from the fire or from the actual trading card sets by Inkworks, I think it was. That yeah. Did them. Um, as well. And then, yeah, my Jane hat. That's great. Yeah, so that, the memories, right? Absolutely. That's so cool. But, all right, I think that's it for tonight. What do you think? Yeah, that was a great, man. That was, uh, I think we we went over our hour a little bit again, but. (laughs) Oh, crap. I Sorry, I missed all those questions. Oh, Uh, no, I've been watching it. So, yeah. Um, chip challenge 
Uh, first to get Emilia, Stephen, Amel, Misha, Mondo Zarnais picked up a few parcels. Yeah, no, I was keeping an eye on them on my uh, on my phone. Uh, does anybody have any questions before we we uh, head out? And make sure you're here next week for that guest. That's going to be crazy. Like, if you wanted to ask any questions about conventions, your chance is next week. Yeah. You don't want to miss that. You know, uh, when I repost this video, post a comment. Uh, also, uh, all you guys watching live, if you get a chance, when I repost these tomorrow, like a edited version, slim it down a little bit, uh, please share, like, and whatnot when you can. Uh you know, we're trying to get more than six or seven viewers. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, make sure you guys check out, like, all of Marco's Autograph of the Month Club, 258 West, um, Autograph.Deals. Check out all of those. Make sure, what is it on YouTube? Fandom TV? My Fandom dot t or My Fandom TV dot, or, yeah, yeah just My, my Fandom my TV. My Fandom TV on YouTube. Make sure you check out box pop and beauty on youtube we are i think 75 subscribers away from 1000 so we're going to be doing a pretty big giveaway at that um go check out the mystery box bunker group and stay uh, tuned for a possible end of the month marathon yeah we might be doing something marco and i are talking about doing something pretty big so we got plans in the works for some fun stuff so definitely like and share and tell your friends tell your family Tell uh, your dog. Um, some actor guests coming on as well. There you go. So we're gonna we're gonna have some fun with this. Uh, well, we we always have fun with this. But if you enjoy hearing Marco and I ramble, <laughs> cool. All right, guys. Thanks again. 